Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So in this video, I'll focus on the concept of homogeneous functions, right? So basically, what are homogeneous functions? So a function is said to be homogeneous in which the power of each term is the same. So suppose if I write a function like f of x comma y is equal to x square plus y square. So it says that the power of every term should be same. So the first term has power 2, the second term has power 2. So this is indeed homogeneous, right? Let's take another function. Let me write it as x square y plus y cube. So in this case, the first term has power 2 plus 1, 3. The second term also has power 3. So this is also homogeneous, right? Let me take another function, another case, x4 plus y cube. So in this case, what is happening? The first term has power 4, but the second term has power 3. So this is a non-homogeneous equation, right? So how to discuss that whether a given function is homogeneous or not? So suppose you are given any polynomial of degree n and you have to check whether it is a homogeneous function of order n or not. What we do, we take out the highest power that is x raised to power n throughout that expression, right? So when we take out the highest power n from the expression, all the terms will get divided by x raised to power n. So we get the terms left as a0 plus a1, y by x and y by x whole square. And finally, the last term will become y by x whole raised to power n. So you can see that every term is getting converted as a function of y by x. So this whole term can be written as x raised to power n into some function of y by x, right? So that means of for any given function f of x comma y, if you can convert it as x to the power n into some function of y by x, then we see that the given function is homogeneous and the order of the homogeneous function is n. Right? So it is a homogeneous function of order n. Right? Okay. Likewise, you can also take out y raised to power n comma. So then in that case, it should be a function in terms of x upon y. So we can say that another definition could be y to the power n into some function of x upon y. Right? So you can go by any one of these definitions. So let us try and see that is this function a homogeneous function? So here you can see that we have taken out x cube common and the leftover function is already in terms of y by x. So this is a homogeneous function of order degree 3, right, of order 3. Let's try this. Under root x plus under root y upon x square plus y square. So let's take out under root x common from the numerator. So we have under root x into 1 plus under root y by x. And from the denominator, you can take out x square common. So you are left with 1 upon y plus x whole square, right? Take, let's take the common powers of x and we get x raised to power minus 3 by 2. And the leftover function is already a function of y by x. And hence, according to the definition of homogeneous function, this is a homogeneous function of order minus 3 by 2, right? So let's try the next and see what is this theorem all about. So this is a very, very important theorem on Euler's on homogeneous functions. So it says that if z is a homogeneous function of x and y of order n, then x into curl z by curl x plus y into curl z by curl y is equal to n times z. Right? So if there is any homogeneous function of x and y and the order is n, then when you take the partial derivatives and you multiply the coefficients x and y along with them and you add them up, it should always equal to the order times the given function. Right? So let's try to apply this in some question and see how it is being applied. U is equal to cos inverse x plus y upon under root x plus under root y. So to apply this result, first of all, the given function should be homogeneous, right? Only then you can apply the Euler's theorem. So if U is equal to cos inverse x plus y upon under root x plus under root y, Let's try to take out 
x common from the numerator. So we are left with 1 plus y by x. And when we take out from the denominator under root x, we are left with 1 plus under root y upon x. Right? So now this is similarly cos inverse under root x times 1 plus y by x divided by 1 plus under root y upon x. So you can see that obviously this under root x won't come out from cos inverse. So you can see that u is not homogeneous, right? u is a non-homogeneous function. So u, if u is a non-homogeneous function, can we make it homogeneous by multiplying with cos on both sides? So if I have cos u, then it will become root x into some function of y by x, right? So that means u is not homogeneous, but cos u is homogeneous. And what is the order? Is homogeneous of order x is getting the order 1 by 2, right? So according to the Eilers result, it is x into curl by curl x of the homogeneous function. What is the homogeneous function here? Cos u. Plus curl by curl y into cos u is equal to the order that is half into cos u. Right? So let's take the derivative. Derivative of cos u in both the cases will be minus sin u. So we can take out minus sin u common from the expression and we get x into curl u by curl x plus y into curl u by curl y is equal to half cos u. So you can divide by minus sin u and you'll get minus cot u here and you can take that term to the left hand side and you'll get sorry you'll get the answer in a uh, plus in the left hand side right so here you can see that we have checked for the homogeneous function first so if u is homogeneous then u was not homogeneous so we made that function homogeneous by taking cos on the left hand side and that resulted in that cos u is homogeneous and then finally we applied the Eilers result and the Eilers result says that x curl u by curl x into minus sin u plus y curl u by curl y into minus sin u is equal to half cos u and then you can divide by minus sin u on both sides and you'll get the desired result right okay so now we have one more problem here. If u is log x4 plus y4 upon x plus y, again you can see that when we take out x4 common from the numerator, you'll get 1 plus y4 by x4. And you take out x common from the denominator, you'll get 1 plus y by x. So you will, you will be left with x cubed, right? So you'll get the term as u is equal to log e x cubed into 1 plus y by x whole raised to power 4 upon 1 plus y by x whole raised to power oh, 1 plus y by x, right? So here, again, you can see that you cannot take out x cube out from the log. So u is not homogeneous, but you can make it homogeneous by taking exponential on both sides. So you will get e raised to power u is equal to x cube into 1 plus y by x whole cube whole to the power 4, sorry divided by 1 plus y by x, right? And you can apply the Eilers result here. So when you apply the Eilers result, you will get x curl u by curl x plus y curl u by curl y is, now here, what is the order? Order is 3. So instead of u, you will replace it with e raised to power u, right? So you will basically get the equation as x curl by curl x, your homogeneous function is e raised to power u plus y curl by curl y e raised to power u is equal to the order that is 3 into the function e raised to power u. So when you take the derivative, you will get an e raised to power u and you can divide it by e raised to power u on both sides. So you will get x curl u by curl x plus y 
curl u by curl y is equal to right done <clears throat> okay so let's try this problem if z is a homogeneous function of degree n show that so now this is a result in second order derivative so you have to show that x into curl square z by curl x square plus y into curl square z by curl x curl y is n minus 1 into curl z by curl x then there's a similar result with curl z by curl y and then when we take up all these second order derivatives the sum should become n into n minus 1 into z right so first of all it's given that z is a homogeneous function of degree n so we can always say using curl's theorem euler's theorem that x into curl z by curl x plus y into curl z by curl y is equal to n times z that is equation number 1 then as according to the first part we need to calculate curl square z by curl x squared so we need to first calculate what is curl z by curl x so curl z by curl x is equal to you were not some uh, thing uh, so you can see that here when we differentiate it so here derivative with respect to x what is happening here it's a product rule so you apply the product here first take the derivative with respect to x which is 1 so it is curl z by curl x plus now keep x constant derivative of del z by del x would be del square z by del x squared similarly y is constant derivative of del z by del y with respect to x would be curl square z by curl x curl y which is equal to n times n is a constant so curl z by curl x now according to the problem we need to calculate um, the term x curl square z by curl x plus y curl square z by curl x curl y so we retain the terms on the left hand side and we shift this term on the right side so you can take out n minus 1 common and you get curl z by curl x. On similar lines, let's prove the second part by getting the derivative with respect to y. So now when we differentiate 1 with respect to y, I'm sure you'll get this expression. And then finally, if you look at the results there, we need the term x squared. So we multiply equation number 2 with x and multiply this equation number 3 with y because this will become y squared only when you multiply it with y. So when you multiply them, you'll get these two equations, equation number 4 and equation number 5. And you just need to add them up. So when you add them up, these two terms will club and become 2xy. Here, you can take out n minus 1 common. And you'll get x del uh, z by del x plus y del z by del y. And this term is nothing but nz according to the Euler's theorem. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Finally, you can try these problems, right? You are given u as tan inverse x cube plus y cube upon x minus y. So the first result is very simple where you just have to calculate the partial. The You have to just apply the Euler's theorem. And in the second part, you have to proceed by the same manner we did in the previous question. First, from the Euler's theorem, calculate the derivative of this whole expression with respect to x, then with respect to y. And then you multiply the terms accordingly. If you are having x already, so just multiply with another x. Similarly, the equation that you obtain by taking the derivative with respect to y, multiply that equation with y and manipulate the terms and you will get the terms equal to 2 cos 3u into sin u. Right? So I have solved it. So do uh, check out your solutions after you have performed the calculations. Right? And... <clears throat> These are the practice questions that you may practice towards the end. And again, you can check out your answers also. So these are some more problems you can try. And if you have any problems, do let me know in the comment section. And do share the video. Hit the like button if you like the video. And those of you who have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video. Believe in yourself and you will definitely succeed. Thank you so much.